Hi, it's Philip C. Graves with Middle Tennessee State University, Go Blue Raiders, MTSU. I am here today to tell you that the world of online education has recently changed uh, forever. Uh, several years ago, there was an increased push to go to online education because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And most universities and um, even high school and, and primary school have offered more and more options for online education. And that is a great thing. It's more convenient. It can save costs and it can also be uh, far more efficient, but it also presents a lot of challenges, particularly in the, in the area of assessment, making sure that students are doing what they are supposed to do, that they're learning what they're supposed to learn, and making sure that we have some integrity in the system. And um, this meant that a lot of things like multiple choice tests were not so great because there are countless websites that students can go in and just copy the question and paste it and immediately get the answer out and paste those right into the into the software uh, that the online uh, course uses. There are also many, many tools out there that allow students to uh, search and find previously written essays and things like that. And that's that's become a little bit easier to manage because we as university uh, staff have tools that will check for plagiarism. They'll uh, search millions, if not billions, of, of other content on the web and give us a score whether things have been plagiarized. And it's human nature. People wait till the last minute and they will tend to take the easy way out uh, when they're pushed into a corner. And students are, are no different than any of us. We will do the same thing. Um, and one of the, the biggest things that we have had to do with online education is try to shift away from things that are so easy to cheat and game the system and go with things that are, are writing based and those are would be things like essays and student discussions and uh, uh, we would frequently rely on those things and, and put more weight in the course on these things that would require the student to actually type and, and demonstrate critical thinking skills and that world has has changed recently with, uh, the, with artificial intelligence. We think about artificial intelligence from an academic standpoint as a way to help us to evaluate uh, student contributions to make sure that we are um, make sure there's no plagiarism, but also to help score things. So a lot of tools have come out to help faculty members um, score and grade work, to check grammar, to uh, check the content itself, and to help give us a, at least a rough idea of of the performance of the student. And in, in times where where the uh, student to teacher ratio is increasing. It is uh, it is uh, becomes more and more critical for the educators to find tools that can help them to adequately manage larger numbers of students and classes, particularly as we move online, and we don't have to worry about the classroom size. Uh, that's no longer a limitation. We can handle more and more students, but only if we have the tools to properly grade and make sure the students are doing their own work. Um, and that enters uh, that uh, brings up some new tools that are available to students. The students have always been able to go to places like uh, Quizlet and copy paste the questions and put those into the, the course management systems. And we have been able to use tools uh, during test times that will lock down their browsers, but also will also allow their webcam, webcam to be recorded or viewed by a live person to make sure that there is a proctor uh, managing, the, managing the process. But um, many times we ask students to upload um, essays, whether it's for college admissions or for uh, just regular classwork. And we have counted on that being the student's work. Sometimes a friend of theirs may write it or sometimes they may outsource, outsource that to someone overseas. And that we've seen a rise in that. Students outsourcing some of their essay work to overseas providers who will for $5 guarantee you an A on your project. And uh, that, that does tend to happen as well. But it's become way easier recently with the recent introduction of um, some um, open AI projects that uh, have made it really, really easy. These are uh, for-profit companies, but a lot of their tools are available for free right now. And um, it's going to be an interesting um, development as students now have more and more access to these tools as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, probably the most recent. And this one is truly a game changer. So let's try to... Um, get here to the one that has, uh, is really making the news. There have been over a million uh, subscribers just in the last five days. It took Twitter 18 months to get a million subscribers. 
it took uh, Twitch, which is the the platform that all the all the young people use to communicate and share their and stream their videos while they're playing games. It took 12 months for them to get a million users, but just this one, which seems like kind of a geeky tool, has now um, got a million users uh, in, in many reports in, in only a five-day period. In fact, just trying to log in today, it's almost gone exponential. You, you can't even, you can hardly log in. I'm hopefully, hopefully I'm still logged in, can even demonstrate this to you because it's been so busy. And, uh, but this is the uh, kind of the main page, uh, openai.com slash blog slash chat GPT. Chat GPT is the, the recently reduced, improved version. And it's really only out uh, for research and testing purposes right now. This uh, certainly will eventually be a, a service that you would have to pay for, but right now it's available. And that's an interesting thing. Um, in the future, this may be only available to people who can afford to pay for it. So it may be something that uh, causes further um, uh, kind of distribution in the academic performance of the haves and the have-nots. So um, it's a, really a, an interesting development. So it's also being uh, used by computer programmers and, uh, and I can see certain you know, main really big applications in, in academia. So let's actually, rather than talking about what it is, because you can come to this website, read the blogs, and, and watch the countless YouTube videos on how it's truly going to change things. Let's take a look at what it can do uh, in academia. I've got a, I've gone ahead and set up an account and I've logged in and hopefully my login will work. Um, I'm just going to give you the quick example that I just came in here and popped in really quick just to see what would happen if one of my students had this this past semester. One project that I do is I have students um, write an essay and I teach real estate classes at a university level. It's a, these are um, uh, 3,000 level classes typically taken by juniors and seniors. And one of the things that I do is I ask them to do a research project uh, at the library or the web and give me um, a 500 word essay on the history of real estate. And it's, it's a pretty good project uh, because I can, I can uh, check for plagiarism by using um, any number of tools. It compares. It even compares past submissions and other course management programs. So even even things that have been submitted inside other universities' course management system that aren't available to the public, uh, some of those can be searched as well. So if I just go into ChatGPT and type um, write an essay, well, let's say write a 500. Essay on the real estate. Um, I can just hit enter and let's see what happens. The history of real estate can be traced back to ancient civilization where land was considered a valuable resource and a symbol of wealth in ancient Egypt, for example. It's writing this live. And uh, I took one of these essays and plugged it into one of our plagiarism checkers. And it came back and said 100% original. Um, it talks about the ancient Egyptians going into the Middle Ages and feudalism, the Industrial Revolution. And I ran, I've done this several times. And this particular version of the essay is nothing like the previous ones. It's not the same thing. It's not pulling this using a Google search. And it's as easy as copying this essay right here, Control-C, and then I can go into my course management system and paste it right in. And if I want to, I can say, expand on the Middle Ages. And it writes more about the Middle Ages. It talks about the feudalism system, which is a land-based system. It talks about the kings granting large plots of land known as fiefs. This is an A paper. This would be an A paper at a graduate level. This is better probably than I could write. Um, and it continues to write. It's adding and it's adding and it's adding. And I'm going to go ahead and start making, an ed making a change here. And I'm going to say, write it at a fifth grade level. And so now if the student doesn't want to sound so, uh, 
you know, so academic or so high level, they want to make it more believable, they could just change the level that it writes. Write bullet points for five slides. So now it's writing my PowerPoint presentation. And I could tell it in a more write the slides in a in a more casual tone. And I could tell it expand on the fifth. Expand on the fifth slide. This is absolutely unbelievable. There is no way that this could be detected by a professor. These students will get 100s on, on every project. It's even talking about the, the impact on real estate from the COVID-19 pan, you know, COVID pandemic. This is just an unbelievable development. And uh, this, again, this is free right now. I, I'm, I'm glad that students didn't have access to this last semester, or maybe they did, because I had a lot of A's, a lot of really, really well-written. Students could also write discussion posts, write a post about how mortgages And uh, let's say uh, 200 words, uh, let's say 100 words. Write a discussion post about how mortgages work in 100 words. And this is, we have discussions um, all the time uh, that students have to post to. And if a student wrote a discussion post like this, it would be fantastic. I would be scoring them the top. And then we ask students to reply to discussion posts. Write a reply to that discussion post. And here we have a awesome written reply to that previous discussion post. And as a professor, I can use the system the same way. Write an encouraging I need to take typing lessons. Write an encouraging comment about the discussion post. in the style of Donald Trump. Great post. Mortgages are such an important part of the real estate market. It's fantastic to see someone explaining how they work. You're doing a terrific job breaking down the details and making it easy to understand. Keep up the fantastic work. So as a faculty member, you could also use this tool to do good things. You could encourage and motivate students and provide them some, some good comments and feedback. But does it have the potential to make it feel like you're talking to a robot as a student? Well, yeah, it can. I think we need to be careful as well as faculty members to not over rely on AI to do some of this work. We have to still maintain that personal connection with students. So I just think this is an important development that we all need to keep an eye on and um, learn how we can um, make the most of the technology, but not let it become either a crutch or something that students use to turn in work that's not their own. So stay tuned.